Hi folks, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Kiti Box and Q2 multicolor printer that Kiti sent me for review. For an entry-level Core XY machine, it has a decent work volume of 270 by 270 by 256 millimeters in an actively heated, fully enclosed fire retardant chamber that can reach up to 65 degrees Celsius, and it has multi-sensor temperature control to regulate, monitor, and cut power in case of a problem. It also has a 3-in-1 air filtration system that includes a G3 H12 HEPA and an activated carbon air filter to scrub particulates and VOCs from the air while printing. And all of these safety features helped it to be the first 3D printer to be given a MET certification for safety in the US and Canada. With a 370 degrees Celsius hot end featuring a ceramic throat and a new heat dissipation module to prevent clogs, a hardened steel dual gear drive extruder with a bimetal hardened steel nozzle to resist wear, and a 120 degrees Celsius hotbed with a dual sided texture PEI build plate, this machine can safely print just about any filament that you can throw at it. Other features include zero offset technology where the nozzle serves as the sensor for setting Z offset instead of a separate BL touch probe for example, as well as automatic bed leveling to ensure a perfect first layer, input shaping to eliminate print anomalies caused by vibrations, and AI detection camera that automatically detects failures and allows for remote monitoring and time lapse recording, a filament runout sensor, and a 4.3 inch touchscreen for offline printing with a USB drive, though it can be connected to a PC through Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Unboxing and setting it up to get ready for printing only takes around 15 to 20 minutes. The touchscreen display provides instructions and walks you through the setup and calibration process after the machine is first powered up. It's mostly automatic, so all you really need to do is remove a few screws and zip ties and press a few buttons to start the auto bed leveling and input shaping calibration processes. Once I had my printer set up, I moved on to unboxing and setting up the Kiti box, which enables multicolor printing through this machine and the Kiti Plus 4. It can hold four spools and you can gang up to four boxes for a total of 16 different colors, though it is limited to spool sizes ranging from 195 to 202 millimeters in diameter and 50 to 72 millimeters in width. And Kiti recommends not using cardboard spools as they can cause excessive wear on the drive shaft. The Kiti box is compatible with Kiti's NFC filaments, so it recognizes them when loading and automatically adjusts settings accordingly. And unlike other multicolor printing boxes, this one is compatible with engineering filaments. But Kiti does recommend not using flexible or brittle filaments because they can cause jamming. And they recommend not mixing different filaments in the box with wide printing temperature differences because this can cause bleeding after color changes or clogs in the extruder. Like the Q2, the Kitty Box has active chamber heating up to 65 degrees Celsius with intelligent temperature control for safe operation, and it's the first to allow filament drying while you're printing. After turning on the Kitty Box and rebooting the printer, I made sure the indicator lights were blinking blue to indicate they're ready for loading filament. A red light means there's an error. With everything looking good, I placed some desiccant packs in the desiccant holders at the back and started loading the filament. You just need to push the end of the filament into the hole in front of the spool holder and the extruder will automatically load it from there. If it loads without any problems, then the blinking blue light will turn solid. If you open the Kiti box settings through the printer, you can select and remove each filament individually. Since the humidity was high, I decided to dry the filament for a couple hours before printing. For low temperature filaments like PLA, this needs to be done with the filament removed because the box will rotate the spool periodically to prevent the filament from getting too soft. After drying and reloading, I opened the settings and changed the colors to match what was loaded in the box. 
which can be synced with the KD Studio Slicer later. Then I went through the printer settings to check the sensors and Wi-Fi connection before printing the first test file, which of course would be the classic Benchy because it's quick and gives a reasonable impression of what to expect moving forward. After clicking start, the print head moves to the back of the machine to load and purge some of the filament chosen for the file, which is then pinched off and drops out of the back of the machine. Then it cleans the nozzle and purges a second time before starting the print. Including the purge and nozzle cleaning, the total print time was around 25 minutes. I think the seams could be hidden better if they're moved to the corners, and it's a little stringy, but otherwise this print turned out pretty good. Next, I loaded a multicolor 3MF file into KD Studio Slicer, which is basically a reskin version of Prusa with all of the typical settings and features. With multicolor enabled, you can add different filaments to match what's loaded in the KD box, and you have a variety of options for changing the colors of your model using the color painting tool. After slicing, the slicer breaks down how much of each color will be used for different processes, along with the number of filament changes and printing time so you can make adjustments to save time and material. After connecting the printer to the slicer through Wi-Fi and syncing the filament colors, I then sent the G-code file for printing. The color changes are done automatically, but something important to keep in mind when printing multiple colors is that the machine will purge filament between each color change. So the more color changes you have in your G-code, the more time and material you're going to waste, and it can add up quickly. When possible, you can limit this waste by orienting the model in the slicer to have different colors printing at different layers, instead of mixing colors in the same layers, or by printing different colors separately. In this case, there will be 67 filament changes, and the print time will be around 8 hours. This turned out really good too. The lighter filament is a bit opaque so you can see some of the red showing through, but there's no actual filament bleeding and the print quality is great. Next I printed a couple of two-tone fidget rings which took around 6 hours with just two color changes.
Next, I printed a toy car with three different colors, which also took around six hours to finish. Next, I printed a two-tone mask, but printed each color separately. The total print time was around seven and a half hours, and it turned out really good. Because nothing's included with the printer to catch and contain the filament that's purged out the back, I decided to print a box to take care of it. I could have oriented the model so that the letters were on top and there was only one filament change, but the letters end up embedded within the wall better with this orientation, and I didn't need as much support. The catch bin turned out great, but to demonstrate what I mean by how much waste multicolor printing can generate, this is what I produced just from printing the model shown in this video, which nearly fills a plastic grocery bag. But aside from the waste, I'm quite impressed with this printer. The aesthetics are simple, but modern, its performance and print quality are great, and the multicolor printing feature adds a whole new level of creative possibilities. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're interested in this machine, then check out the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and take care.